<laughs> All right. Hi, guys. This is John. Um, I've been talking about a little project I've been working on for a few weeks and uh, spent some of my vacation time working on or whatever. It's been making good progress. And i um, been meaning to show a little demo uh, as I get farther along. And so the project is a compiler, uh, but it compiles uh, as a basic compiler, so it compiles the basic language. And uh, the current target I'm working with is the uh, Tandy or TRS-80 MC-10, kind of the uh, less loved <laughs> little brother of the Coco. Uh, I intend to eventually expand this out at least to the Coco and Dragon and maybe some other systems. Um, it's really been a fun project so far. But anyway, so far I'm only targeting the, um, the MC-10. Um, I'm going to share my screen and we'll walk through a little bit of, um, I'm going to show you what I'm working on. So here we go, sharing the screen. Hope you can see that. So. Uh, I found a basic program. This is from way back in the day when people would publish little basic games and stuff you type in from books or whatever. Uh, this one, I think, originated with Creative Computing. This is called Herkle. It's kind of similar to Hunt the Wumpus where you're kind of looking for something and it, you kind of guess where it is and it gives you some hints. It's not Hunt the Wumpus, but like I said, it's kind of similar. Anyway, I found this version of it. Um, it's on the Yahoo group for the MC-10. It says uh, here is adapted for the MC-10 by someone named Chris Havel. Havel. I'm not intentionally mispronouncing your name, Chris, but <laughs> um, trust me. Um, anyway, it says it's adapted for it, but I noticed when you print some of the stuff out, even in the original basic interpreter, some of these lines extend full width of the screen. You kind of end up scrolling an extra line because of that, and some of it just doesn't look quite right. So I've made a couple of extra modifications to some of the printouts and changed uh, Herkle is hiding to Herkle hides. Um, the only real big change here functionally is the original had this um, A equals int G times RND1, which looks like the original version of BASIC. It doesn't seem like that would work correctly on the MC-10 to begin with from, from my experiments, but... Anyway, the, you know, so the, most basics have this R&D that uh, just returns basically a, a fractional value, zero to one. You multiply it by some other thing if you want, if you want an integer value. Uh, the color basic R&D doesn't really work that way. And so I think this is the modification you have to make, even if you're just running on the basic interpreter. But anyway, the, the compiler I'm working on, which uh, I'm calling si system basic because um, anyway, uh, it's an integer basic, so we can't, um, at least at this point, uh, it only does integer values. So we can't do a zero to a fractional value from zero to one anyway. This is what we really wanted out of this, so I changed these lines to be uh, just A equals RNG of G and B equals RNG of G. Um, don't think I made any other changes in here. There might be something that snuck in just, just, uh, formatting text or whatever, but I think it's otherwise pretty much the same. Anyway, so here's the idea. It's not a hugely complicated program, but it is significant. It's um, about 50 lines. It does a variety of things. Um, you can see some of the features it's making use of. Um, you know, there is a for loop, go-tos, rem statements, various forms of print, there's if statements, if with the implied go-to, um, that sort of stuff. Anyway, um, there. so that's that. So that's what it looks like. And so here I run through the compiler. So I'm going to compile hercle.txt, which is really could be hercle.bas. Anyway, the, the file you're just looking at with the basic source in it, I'm going to run it through my system basic compiler, so that's basic C, and then output Herkel.sim. Okay, pretty silent there, but um, so this is what you get, Herkel.sim, it's generated by the system basic compiler. Um, note the org of hex 434C, 
That's um, pretty low in the uh, about as low as you can go with a machine language program in in uh, MC10 Basic, unless you start wiping things out. Um, but anyway, you can see uh, it's got these debug statements that correspond with the source lines. You see the labels generated from the source line numbers. The line numbers are actually they're really just labels uh, in the compiled source. They you could even go out of order if you wanted to. They can be text labels. Uh, and there can be no labels at all. It doesn't really matter. But so you can you know, just get a sense for the kind of source it generates on various JSRs and loads and stores. Um, does a lot of printing there, you can see. Um, and uh, this little junk here is the implementation of a for loop. Um, and uh, you can see it's calling the ROM vectors for character out. Um, so here's a lot of math. <laughs> um, I think that's probably the um, part of the R and D. I don't know. That's something else. Uh, anyway, um, so anyway, you can see that it generates a fair amount of source. Um, and then here's the various kind of intrinsic calls that it generates source for. Um, eventually, I'm, I'm probably going to switch to some sort of an assembler that understands uh, object files and can do linking. They won't have to generate so much source and everything, but that effect will be the same. So anyway, um, so I've got everything. I may put this together into some sort of driver program at some point, but for now, we're going to do the steps individually. So here we're going to assemble. I've got, I'm using the old Motorola Freeware BBS assembler. It's AS1, which is a 6801 slash 6803 targeting assembler. Um, assembling the source file we just saw, and it's going to generate a listing file. And so there's the listing file with all the, um, you know, the, the binary values and hex. Um, the addresses and the actual assembled values on the left and then the source on the right. Um, so, you know, it looks like a lot of code, which it sort of is. Um, um, so before I can move on, just for a sense of things, um, the original basic program, 52 lines, 1238 bytes. Um, the assembly code <laughs> is 800 lines and um, 88,500 8 um, bytes, a little more than that. Um, um, we've already done the assembly. So the assembly generates what's called an, an S record or S19 or S19 is really what it stands for. Uh, the S19 comes from S records or numbers. So you have S1 records, S2 records, all the way up to S9 records. So S19. So whenever you see that S19, this is kind of a common extension for S records. Sometimes you just see it called S rec. Um, anyway, uh, OBJ copy is kind of a standard uh, Unix um, or Unix style. Uh, really, uh, out of the Ben used tools package for the Linux geeks out there, um, but it's for copying different forms of binary uh, object files around, and uh, you could use it to convert, you know, like ELF to COF and that sort of thing. But in this case, we're going to convert S record to just a flat binary file. So the flat binary meaning structureless, just like it looked in RAM. So Herkle.s19, and then I call the result Herkle.ram because it's literally an image of what goes in the RAM. So there's your ob ob object copy. And so now we have a Herkle.ram, which represents what the inside of memory really should look like. And we've got this little program called Tapify. It orig originated um, with uh, Alan Cox and uh, one of his projects. And then when I was working on the XMS Rush for the MC10, he appointed me to it to, to help me with uh, turning uh, um, a similar output into a cassette file. Um, and so you see Tapify Herkle.ram, which is just created with OBJ copy. I'm going to create a Herkle.cas file. Uh, the name of the file when you load the cassette is going to be Herkle. 
And uh, that ZRX four three four C, that's the uh, the load and start addresses for the binary. That those get tucked into the the cassette file as part of the standard loading format. So tapeify is done, right? So one more step. Um, missing it here. Um, and so now we have to convert the CAS file to a WAV file, which we probably don't technically have to do, but it's something you can do in case we want to play it into an actual uh, physical MC10 later. Uh, that's just a little Perl script that, that does the um, conversion of the bits in the CAS file to uh, a WAV file um, for actual audio playback. Okay, so all that's very fun, very well done, blah, blah, blah. And so here's what we're ultimately going for. So I'm going to use main. And um, you can see the options there. I'm going to pop it up in a window. I've got a ROMs directory for it to find the MC10 ROMs. Uh, I'm not sure why I need this no auto save. It's supposed to be the default, but for some reason it doesn't seem to be. Uh, starting MC10 emulation, and that's already set it up so the ca cassette uh, mounted uh, image will be that Hercule.wav file. So we'll go ahead and start it. Um, so, yeah, yeah, C load M, and so it's waiting for me to start the tape. And if you remember, the MC10 only had the uh, the input and output audio stuff. It didn't actually have the remote jack like the Coco did. Uh, the cable, I had the jack, but the MC10 wouldn't actually use it. <laughs> anyway, so you have to go in here to tape control and manually hit play. And there you go. It's found Hercule. It's loading it up. And when it gets to about nine seconds, there, done. Okay, and of course, this is a, an assembly language or a machine language um, program, so you run it with exec. There, Hercule, copyright creative computing, adapted for MC10, supposedly by Chris Howell. Um, so, you know, Hercule hides on a 10 by 10 grid. So basically, you just pick the grid coordinates, um, X, comma, Y, um, where the X represents the you know, west to east, uh, and um, uh, Y represents uh, north to south for, in terms of the lowest to highest numbers. So, we'll start, we'll pick something towards the middle. Uh, does it go southeast? So if you want to go east, it means you need to go something bigger than four, so we'll say seven. And if you want to go south, um, you want to go something, um, um, yeah, I think it actually goes south to north uh, in terms of the bigger number. So we want to go south, so let's pick a number like two. Now it says northwest, so you want a number that's back towards four from seven so we'll just say five and um four oh we'll go east so the four part is correct and we want to go um seven four oh that was too far six four yeah he found him in five guesses and then it's ready to play again so anyway uh should you see now that um Making enough progress, I can run a, a, a classic uh, <laughs> basic game from uh, Creative Computing um, with uh, only minor modifications. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's pretty cool. Um, they also, back in terms of space, what, what do we end up with in terms of size on the uh, so Hercule.ram is um, a little less than one and a half K. So when we went back up here to Hercule.txt was one and a quarter K. <laughs> so the, the compiled source there is only a little bit bigger than the original basic file. That's not terrible. It's not great. Whatever. It's probably about average. Um, looks like you're averaging about what? Um, 30 um, compiled bytes per line of a basic. I have no idea if that's a good metric or not. Anyway, what I do know is it's kind of cool. You can compile a basic program from the past and um, um, do whatever it is you want to do. 
So um, there's my progress report on my cool project, System Basic. Uh, like I said, targeting the MC10. I've still got to expand it. It's missing, um, it's missing floating point uh, variables, which is probably low on the on the priority list. Um, uh, I'd like to get there eventually, but whatever. Um, it can't do string variables. Probably need those. Um, and it can't do array variables, uh, or variable arrays, whatever you want to say it. Probably need those. Um, probably need them to be multidimensional as well. That shouldn't be too hard once I have them at all. <laughs> um, beyond that, there's uh, some more words to be added and probably want to expand out to, um, to basically cover Color Basic or maybe some other versions of Basic. I think it'd be pretty easy to be compatible with the, the original Apple uh, Integer Basic. Um, and um, beyond that, maybe expand out, um, add like functions and procedures, like maybe like Quick Basic or something like that. But those are, again, those are kind of like uh, the um, floating point variables are kind of a ways off. Anyway, something to look forward to. I hope you've enjoyed this little demo and, uh, you know, Cocoa Forever or Micro Cocoa MC10 Forever.